Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, as I promised you guys, I was gonna give you guys a video on losses, how to cope with losses. Um, I'm gonna share a couple of my losses with you guys. My reactions when I found out about those people I lost and post reactions like how do I move forward to this person you guys see as being so strong. I'm gonna show you guys my secrets and how I cope with stuff. The first loss I'm gonna hit on is the loss of my little sister. That was the first loss I've ever experienced in my life. I was seven years old, um, we was in a car accident, a real bad car accident. Um, I really didn't know she was lying at first. Like, I woke up in the hospital, me and my youngest sister was in the hospital, and everything was just all okay. Like, I didn't even think to ask, like, why we in this hospital. So, we in the hospital, and I'm playing with my little sister, my older sister was there to visit. Like, she wasn't just injured bad. I had, like, I didn't even think to remember, like, to ask where my mama was. Like, my daddy was there, my grandma was there. Like, everybody, like, the whole family was just, just there. So, like, I'm just happy to be around family. And I'm so young to the point to even just ask all those questions. So, like, it hit. They set me down. They telling me, oh, you're going to have to go stay with your daddy for a little while. Like, I'm crying. And then I'm looking around, and I notice, like, I'm missing a person. So, I'm like, where's Kitty? And I look, and my daddy started crying. My grandma started crying. I'm just like... Where's Kitty? Like the innocent, you know, like the innocent ex, like, where's Kitty? So they sat me down, they told me she was deceased. Um, I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks, so we missed the funeral. Me or my youngest sister didn't go to the funeral. And of course my mom was vegetated from that accident, so she didn't make the funeral. So it was just like it was one of those things like I knew to be sad about, but I really didn't know how to deal with stuff then. Like I'm just young, so at that point like I'm just crying about it. Um, I'm just in those random hazes where like I'm just like I miss her I'm crying and to deal with that like my dad and my stepmom had took me to a therapist like I was going to this orphanage and they sent me with this therapist I remember my first session like she was just like tell me how you feel and I'm just crying like I'm sad like what you mean how I feel like I'm just sad at this point like but she was just like telling me explain stuff like it was a whole uproar. Like, I wasn't able to stay with my mom anymore. I wasn't in the house with my sisters. At this point, like, I'm living in the house with my dad, my stepbrother, my stepmom. Like, it was a whole new environment. Like, watching my mom struggle with making everything happen to my dad where it looked like everything's together. Like, it was just a whole new surrounding. But it ended up smoothing it out. You know, my dad raised me those years. The next loss um, was the loss of my mom. August 5th, 2013, I had canceling. I was 19 when I had Kinsley. Um, two weeks later, I was car shopping because I needed a new car, a new baby, new car. And I was in Shreveport. I get a call. Like, I don't really talk to my mom's family at all. Like, once I moved with my dad, we barely had a bone. Like, I'll go see them once a month to see my other siblings. But, you know, like, and then at this point, like, I'm grown. It's nothing y'all could tell me. Like, me and my family had fell off when they found that I was pregnant. Like, I was the outcast. So they called me, um, Charlie, where you at? I'm like, why? Because we don't talk. Like, what y'all want? Oh, we need you to get to the hospital. Who's in the hospital at this point? Your mom in the hospital. I'm like, what mom in the hospital for? Like, she don't be sick, but she in the hospital for it. We just need you to get here. We'll answer questions later. Okay, rush to the hospital. Street was an hour away, so I rushed to the hospital. Get to the hospital. Whole family there once again. And I got a newborn baby, like a fresh baby. Everybody acting like they so happy to see me, but cut, cut the smile talk. Like, what are we here for? So they take me to the room with my mama and I'm looking at her like she looking lifeless like it's not my mama like I'm not looking at the person like who raised me not the person like who gave me life like it's just like what the f like what's going on so they're like oh the doctor's coming to talk to us in an hour we still sitting there with this fake relationship fake bond fake oh I missed you how you been like all this fake talk and then the doctor come in and he's basically saying like we gotta make a call. Either they gon' they gonna end up doing it in a couple of weeks because she wasn't gonna make it on the machines, or we could call it. So the bone with me and my sisters like I'm not the oldest, but I'm the oldest. Or my mama kid like my wise, I'm the oldest. I have an older sister, but she was sheltered growing up, so like she really don't she can't really make decisions on her own. And then it was my little sister, but she was still in high school at that point. So they are like, what we gonna do? It's at this point, like, they talking to me, my papa, my uncle, my aunt, and I'm just like, I don't know what just made me talk out, but I'm just like, that's not my mama. Like, y'all not finna keep hurting. Like, she not finna keep suffering. Nah, we can't, nah, we can't do it. Like, I'm holding my newborn child, like, my mama's first grandchild at this point, making a decision, like, saying, like, 
it's time to let her stop suffering. So I made the call. Everybody was like, you sure? Like, it was like guilt, but it was like relief at the same time. Because if y'all could have saw what I saw at that point, like, it was time. So they made the call. We came back the next day. 9 o'clock that morning. Um, the nurse started doing the, machine, the stuff on the machine. It was the whole family there. My little sister didn't go to school that day. So it's the whole family there, and like I'm really looking at the machine, like I'm watching the heart rate drop, I'm watching the levels, all that stuff decrease. Like I'm really watching life leave my mom, and she's like, it was hard. It was really hard. Like I got my baby sister crying on me. I got my older sister like looking lost. Then I got my confused family with all their problems. Like, but we got through it. Like, but to get through that. Coping with that loss, like the loss of the person who gave me life, it just made me like become a better mother. Like I put all that energy, like what I lost to my mama, what I can remember about my mama, I put it into raising my daughter. Like then I took pride, like when we was burying her, like the whole family was there. So it's just like, oh, you remind me so much of your mama. You build like your mama. Your mindset like your mama. You're a leader like your mama. Oh, you even a mother now, like. So it's like I took pride into being a mother. Like that's what really. When y'all be like, you a good mother to your kids? I'm only doing what I remember my mama doing. That was the way I got past that one. Uh, the loss of my grandma. I spoke light on it last time, the last video. Because that's one of the reasons like me and G. Bond was so close. He lost his auntie the same night I lost my grandma. My grandma really helped my dad raise me after the point when my mom was vegetated when I was seven. So, like, we really didn't get along. Like, she really had to be the one to put her foot down. Like, my daddy would buy me, he'll spoil me. But my grandma, like, she'll know me. So, no, don't tell me no. Like, my daddy don't tell me no. I don't want to hear no from you. So, like, I always felt like she was mean. But we had the same personality. Uh, the loss of her, it was really, like, I disappointed a lot of people when I got pregnant. So, it was like I straight off. Like, I went to make my own family. I went to make my own family. I'm dating. Like, I'm not coming home as much. I moved from my hometown. So, when... I got the call about her like I knew she was sick but I was preparing myself to go home for Christmas to see her like I didn't want to go home early to go handle that like I'm gonna see her at Christmas I thought I was gonna be able to see her for Christmas my daddy told me I had time to come home for Christmas but she didn't make it to Christmas I was on Facebook I was scrolling Facebook and my cousin I got a text from my cousin he was like I'm here from y'all I'm sorry for y'all lost I'm like what the what loss so then I started getting tags on Facebook. People posting my grandma. I'm just like, bro. So I called my dad. Like, I really feel bad thinking about it now. I called my dad. I'm like, you told me I had time. Like, I'm really cursing. Like, I cursed my dad out. That's how you knew I wasn't in my right mind. Like, you told me I had time. You lied to me. Like, I'm not going to say everything I said, but it hurt because I thought I had time. So from that, we buried her. That's the first time my family met G. He came in a funeral with the red shoes I spoke on last time. But from that, I learned, like, don't always think you have time with people. Like, value the time you have with people. You don't ever know when time is out. Like, it could be gone in a matter of blinking your eyes. Like, don't ever exaggerate the, all I have. Don't ever say I have time. You don't have time. Like, anything could happen. You don't have time. So, this is going to conclude my part one. Part two on pains, losses, coping with losses moving forward. Um, I'm going to speak on losing G, where I was, how the whole rundown of that situation, losing quick, and how did I build to be the person I am right now. Like, what mental things I had to do to myself, um, emotional overcomes. That's all going to be in part two. So, like, subscribe, comment, give me feedback, follow up with me. If you support me, I love you. See you on the next video. Bye, guys.